All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be looking at ratios in proportions. This is section 7.1 in your book. Um, essentially, ratios and proportions. Ratios are just plain and simply a fraction. Um, any fraction that you've ever had, one half, one fourth, three fourths, five fourths, what, whatever, any, any, any fraction that you've had um, is a ratio. You can write that several different ways. You can either write it as a fraction like A over B, like you've seen in the past, one half, three fourths, etc. Or you can go and write it as things like A to B or A colon B. These things you often see if you're going to write something like um, that horse has a three to five chance of winning. You might you might write a ratio in that way, three to five chance of winning. A proportion is defined as an equation which in which two ratios are equal. So if we have two fractions like two fourths, that is equal to one half, we could say that's a proportion. Two fourths is proportional to one half. You've seen ratios and proportions several different places throughout your careers in mathematics. For example, um, calculating slopes of things. Um, you've calculated the slope by calculating rise over run. So if you're going to find the here we go, if you're going to find the rise of something, well, you're dropping down from up top at three all the way down to negative two. That's your rise. So your rise is really three minus a negative two. And you are running all the way from negative one over to two. So you're running three really. Negative one over to two. Let's write that out. If you simplify that down now, um, you get a, looks like a 5 on top, 3 minus a negative 2 is a 5, 5 on top, and a negative 1 minus a negative 2 is a negative 3 on bottom. We would say that our ratio is 5 over negative 3, or 5 thirds, negative 5 thirds, we'd say is our ratio of our slope. That should be a review for you, I'd imagine. You can also use ratios and proportions in solving for a missing side of a triangle, let's say. Suppose the ratio of some side lengths of a triangle is 4 to 7 to 5. In other words, if we go ahead and draw out a triangle, if one side is 4, one side is 5, and the last side is 7, if we go ahead and add those on up, 4 to 5 to 7, we need a triangle that has a perimeter of 30 or 96, something that is similar to this triangle but has a perimeter of 96. Clearly, if we add these up, that doesn't happen. 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 7 is a 16. That's not quite enough. If we doubled all of these side lengths, let's say, so rather than a 4, let's say we have an 8. Rather than a 5, let's say we have a 10. And rather than a 7, we have a 14. We doubled all the side lengths. We still don't have enough of a perimeter. 10 plus 14 is going to be a 24 plus an 8 is going to be a 32. Not quite enough yet. So what do we do? We need to multiply all of these numbers by some value. Let's call that value x. And we need it in such a way that, switch over to green here, if we have 4 x's, 4 times x plus 7 times x plus the 5 times x, all of those added together are going to equal 96. All right, 96 is equal to 4x plus 7x plus 5x. We can solve for x now, adding all these together. 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 7 is a 16, so this is really 96 is equal to 16x. Divide both sides by 16. Um, oh dear, off the top of my head, I believe that is a 6. Yes, 16 times 6. I can go ahead and verify that with my calculator here. It's 96 over a 16 is indeed a 6. Awesome, awesome. So we know then that, that x equals 6. So what are, the, what are the lengths of the sides? Originally we had a triangle that had a 4 side, a 5 side, and a 7 side, but it was really a 4x side, a 5x side, and a 7x side. So if we go ahead and plug that x in to 
our four here. What's the length of the shortest side? Well, the shortest side is just four times x, four times six, which is a 24. So we'd say that that length, that shortest side is 24. The other sides would be like five times six is a 30, six times seven, um, and multiply all those together, add them on up, you're gonna get a perimeter of 96. Moving on, there's this thing in math, you've probably seen it before, in, in all likelihood you saw it last year during algebra, um, called the cross product property, also called commonly cross multiplication. Essentially what it means is if you have a fraction, two sides are equal to each other, two sides, um, both with fractions are equal to each other, you can multiply the A times D, and you can multiply the B times C, and those are equal to each other. For example, if we go into series of problems here, this first one up, we have two fractions equal to each other. We're going to go ahead and cross multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and write 56 times x is equal to 7 times 72. 56 times x is still going to say the same. And 7 times 72. Um, 7 times 72, I know 7 times 7 is a 49, so it's going to be a little over 490, plus another 14. Is this going to be a 504? I'm pulling out a cell phone calculator here. Give me just one moment to check. 7 times 72 is, in fact, a 504. And if we go ahead and do the logical thing, divide both sides by a 56, divide both sides by a 56, and over here by a 56 as well. We're going to wind up with an x equals a 504 over a 56. 9. x equals 9. Alright, we got an x equals 9 for this first one. We can check that if we want to. If we do 7 over 9 on your calculator and 56 over 72 on your calculator, um, let's do that 7, seven over 9 on your calculator is 0.7777777 over and over again. 56 over 72 on your calculator is the exact same thing. We know for this first one x equals 9. Next one up we have another proportion. We can go ahead and cross multiply this one as well. So 18 times a 2y. If we multiply that one out, 2y times 18 on one side and on the other side we have a 9 times a 6. Well, 2y times 18, you can rearrange the multiplication, that's really 2 times 18, which is a 36. We still have that y value, and on the other side, 9 times a 6 is a 54. So 36y equals 54, that comes from just multiplying things out. Um, divide both sides by 36, I'm going to pull out my calculator once more, and we get a 54 over a 36 is equal to a 1.5. We're going to solve y equals 1.5. All right. If we plug that back in, 2 times 1.5 is a 3. 3 divided by 9 is 1 third. It simplifies to 6 over 18 also simplifies to 1 third. So that works. That works. Last one up, we have another proportion that is set up. This time there's some addition involved. So this is, this is going to take a little bit of a trick here. Um, switch back over to red for this one now. Let's see how to make a box. Alt, no, control, perfect. All right, if we go and cross multiply this one out this time, this is 15 times the 3 plus Z side is equal to 5 times an 18 side. Well, just like usual, what do we need to do here? We need to cross, or we need to distribute. 15 times 3 is going to be a 45. 15 times z is just 15z. On the other side, 5 times 18, I believe, is a 90. If we subtract 45 from both sides, you know what? I'll go and switch over to green here, because why not? Green's pretty cool. We're going into the holiday season. Might as well use red and green as much as we can. Subtract the 45 from both sides. We are going to wind up with now... 15z is equal to 45. That means that if we divide both sides by 5, we wind up with a z equals 3. Let's check that. 3 plus a 3 is a, not, is a 6. 6 over 5 and 18 over 15. Are those equivalent to each other? 6 over 5 and 18 over 15. 6 over 5 is 1.2. 18 over 15 is also 1.2. So yes, 
RZ does need to be 3. Plugging that in, it checks out. So the question often arises in math, when are we ever going to use this, Mr. Reese? Um, we'll check that out in the next example. Forgot, we have one more example here. If we're given 18C equals 24D, and we want to find the ratio of D to C. D to C. Remember, with D to C, we can go ahead and write that out. That expression out, D to C, we can write that as D over C, right? We can write that as D over C. So we need to ask ourselves, what over what would cross multiply to make D over C? Well, your first inclination might be like, D is by the 24, let's put 24 on top. Actually not correct. If we need 24 and D to be together, if D is up on top and we want them to cross multiply, 24 needs to be on the bottom. Similarly, C and 18 are going to go together. In order for them to cross multiply, we're going to need to put 18 on top. That way, 18 times C is going to make this side. D times 24 is going to make that side. So the ratio of D to C is 18 to 24. If we want to write that in a simpler form now, we want to reduce this fraction. We need to ask ourselves, what types of numbers can be divided by each one? I know both of these numbers is divisible by, well, this one's divisible by 9 and a 2. This one's not divisible by 9. It is divisible by 2. Both of them are divisible by 6. If we divide now, divide both of these by 6, both top and bottom. I'm going to go ahead and divide top and bottom by 6. That's going to leave us now. 18 over 6 is a 3. 24 over 6 is a 4. This is going to simplify down to just 3 fourths. And that's going to be our final answer for this ratio. What's the ratio from D to C? 3 fourths. For your last example up here today, um, I know many of you have seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy. When I'm grading exams, I often pop the Lord of the Rings trilogy in. It's a great series. But that I digress there. The special effects team that were building Sauron's tower obviously didn't build a tower that was 996 meters wide and several dozen meters tall. That's, that's kind of a ridiculous thing for a film crew to do. Instead, they built a moderately sized tower that was 8 meters tall and had a width of 6 meters. Alright, so 8 meters tall, height of 8 meters, and a width of 6 meters. That was the model height. That's still pretty tall when you think an eight, a meter is approximately 3 feet. Height of this thing was approximately 24 feet. Still pretty tall. Not quite as tall as, you know, big towers in Dubai or whatever, but still pretty tall. If we want to figure out, given that the width of the full-size tower, according to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, is 996 meters tall. We want to figure out the height of this tower. We're going to make a ratio of height, or actually width. I'm going to put width in red, and I'm going to go ahead and put height in blue for this first model tower. We had a width of 6, and we had a height of 8. Alright, put an equal sign between these. Width of 6, height of 8, if we go ahead and set a ratio here, <laughs> yep, of, yep, of, um, if we have, let's see here, width is 996 according to the books in real life. How big is the actual height of this thing? We don't know yet. Let's go and put it x. We can cross multiply these as well. If we cross multiply these out, 6x is equal to 996 times 8. Putting that into our calculators, 996 times 8 gives us 7,968. So we have 6x equals 7,968. If we divide both sides by 6 now, we wind up with 1,328. X equals 1,328. That means that for the filming of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Sauron's tower ended up being a full height of 1,328 1, meters, which seems reasonable because if you look at this ratio, the height, 8, was bigger than the 
width of 6 and so the width or the height of the real one is a bit bigger than the width of the real one. Looking at the last bit here, answering a couple of cool questions, is the ratio 6 to 7 the same as 7 to 6? No, it is not, just because if you go ahead and divide those out, 6 over 7 gives you a certain fraction, 7 over 6 gives you another. Um, they're not equivalent to each other. If Susan wants to know that the fractions 3 over 7 and 12 over 28 are equivalent, Susan can simply, in her calculator, type in 3 over 7, get 0.428, etc. And 12 over 28, we get the same decimal, so they are equivalent to each other. Alternatively, you can cross-multiply. Hopefully this helped. Email me if you have any questions. Enjoy.